So the next set of graphs that we're going to look at in this unit are graphing the reciprocals of quadratics. So quadratic is just like the next step. It's going to have multiple vertical asymptotes potentially, and it just makes it a little bit more challenging. It's actually not that har much harder, and it's one of those things that you can kind of memorize the way that the graph goes. And after you're finding your x and y intercepts and your asymptotes, the graphs just kind of fill themselves in. So there's steps to doing this, and when you're doing it, you always want to kind of do it in the same way. All right, so you're checking your asymptotes first, then you're finding your intercepts, and then you're looking at your end behaviors. Now your end behaviors, this is the thing that you can kind of memorize the shape. If you know the shape of the function, then you don't really have to worry about the end behaviors. They're more of a double check at the end but it is useful to kind of go through that and understand how they work. All right, so if we're looking at just the typical y, or sorry, f of x equals one over x squared. Our vertical asymptote here is going to be y equals zero. Because if we look at this, we know that x cannot equal zero here and then therefore, or sorry, x equals zero. So then it's the y-axis. And we also have a horizontal asymptote here because one can never be zero, okay? It's always gonna be one over something. No matter how much we make x a, a number, it can be a billion and then a billion squared, it's still one over a billion squared, okay? So we've got a vertical intercept at x equals zero. We've got no x-intercepts, so this was um, our asymptote. As x approaches infin or sorry, as x approaches zero from the negative, okay, this is where we're gonna put in something like f at negative zero point, um, let's call it just zero one this time. So that's one over negative zero point zero one squared. And what you need to notice here is that it's going to make it a positive number because we're squaring it. We've got 0 0.01 and we're squaring it and we're going to get 10,000. Okay, so it's positive. As we approach it from the positive side, we're going to get the exact same thing because oh, 0 0.01 squared, 0 0.01 or negative 0.01, if we're squaring them, we're going to get the exact same thing each time. So these both go up to infinity. Okay, well, if we go to negative infinity then, what's going to happen? Well, we're going to have, let's call it f at negative, um, I don't know, a 100. It doesn't really matter. We know that it's going to get really big, um, and it's going to behave in the similar way. So got negative 100 squared, so that's going to be 1 over 10,000, and 1 over 10,000 is just 0 0.0001, and then this same thing happens up here, 1 over 100 squared, and then that's 1 over 10,000. 0 0.1, 2, 3. So those are both on the positive side. So this graph actually just connects like this. That's the only way it can connect. Obviously, that doesn't look very nice, so why don't we smooth that out a little bit? But it's the only way that that graph can connect. We're going from here up to here, okay? We're going from there down to there. We have no intercepts, so it can't cross the axis at all. I guess like it could do something like that and connect, but that wouldn't make sense. So there's our graph, okay? You do your asymptotes first, then your intercepts, and then you're doing your end patterns. Okay, the next graph is a little bit harder, okay? In this type, once you memorize it, it's not very hard. This is obviously, sorry, the positive version. If we threw a negative in front of that, the whole graph, so I'll do it in a different color, but all that would happen 
is it would be the exact same graph, but everything would be facing down. Okay, it's like having a negative a value on a quadratic. Okay, the whole graph just reflects down because our a value in this case, remember, these are all functions. Our a value is negative. It's just reflected the graph down. All right. So looking at this next one, first thing we need to do is we need to factor. Okay, so we're going to change this to one over x minus 2, x plus 1. So what that means is to find our asymptotes, I don't know if you've noticed what I've been doing, I've been making the bottom of the equation 0. So here, our vertical asymptotes are going to be x equals 2 from this bracket, and x equals negative 1 from this bracket. Okay, I'm using the two brackets, and I'm using, I'm making them equal to 0 and finding my asymptotes. Now my y-intercept, again, I'm going to go back to this first equation to find my y-intercept, because all that happens is everything here just goes away. Okay, so when we find our y-intercepts, we're making x equals 0, and we're left with 1 over negative 2, so our y-intercept is y equals negative 1 half. Okay, our x-intercepts, we haven't moved the graph up or down. There's no way to make 1 equal to 0, because remember, to find our x-intercepts, we have to have y equals, oh, um, let's fix that. So we've got x minus 2, x plus 1. There's no way for this to be true, because 1 can never equal 0. And we can never make the bottom of that equation any number that makes 1 equal to 0. Okay, so that can never hold true in this sense. So here, we have no x-intercepts. Now our end behaviors, we actually have to check negative 1 and 2. So as we approach negative 1 from the bottom, so we have something like, so remember, if you think of a number line, um, I'll do it up at the top. If you think of a number line, we're looking at negative 1, and we're looking at 2. So approaching negative 1 from the bottom, we need to get a number that's really close, but not quite there. So this would be like f at negative 1.001, okay, because it has to be from the left. Approaching from the top, we would have f at negative 0.999, same thing for 2, so that was going this way. 2, we're approaching from the bottom, from the top, okay? So we're going to the numbers from the bottom, from the top. So what's going to happen here is going from the bottom, we've got f at 1.999, and f at 2.001. Now what you're going to find is this, these values are either going to go to negative or positive infinity. Okay, so if we were to plug in that first one, we've got 1 over, um, what do we have, 1.001. And then we're squaring it. And then we're subtracting 1.001. That's positive. And then minus 2. And we get 300. So this value is 333.2. And there's a bunch of decimals, which is essentially positive infinity. OK? Now, I could go through and do each value here, okay? And I would end up finding those, okay? What you're going to find is this one here. So if we were to graph this, or asymptotes 2 and negative 1. So we've got 2 and negative 1. Those are, they're not intercepts, sorry. Those are asymptotes. Okay, and you can write your asymptote, this is x equals negative 1, this is x equals 2, you can write them down at the bottom. 
this is right on the axis. Again, if you're writing this on a graph and you can't see it, you can dot it just above the axis so you can see that value. Okay, now if we go back and we look at our intercept, uh, whoops, we've got negative a half, so that one goes there. And then we were looking at end patterns. The first one we did showed us that we have, we're going to positive infinity as we approach negative. Okay, so that's going there. The next value we would have found is this one is going to be negative infinity. So that value is going to go right here at the bottom there. Then this value is going to be negative infinity again, which is going to go right here. And the last one would be positive infinity, which would go up here. Now the only two things that we need to check are end behaviors. So as f approaches infinity, and as f, well we'll call that one negative, sorry, and as f approaches positive infinity. Okay, if you think about the graph itself, if we look at f at x, we have f at x is 1 over infinite, negative infinity squared. Well, that's always going to be bigger than negative infinity. Okay, so what this is going to do is it's going to make it 1 over essentially infinity, a really big number. Okay, because the squared value is going to trump anything that happens after it. If we had a cubic value in front, it would trump anything after because a cubic, well, we, when we're talking about a hundred or a thousand, it's not really that big. But if I talk about a number cubed that's got nine zeros or 20 zeros or a million zeros after it, well, that number trumps anything that comes after it that has a significantly less amount of zeros. So that squared is just going to make both of these 1 over infinity squared, which is essentially getting really, really close to 0 without ever touching it. So that means we're coming down here. We're coming down here. This is going to connect like that, because again, we talked about that. That's our quadratic graph that we originally had. It's just been separated by our asymptotes. Now, what happens in the middle is we actually get a quadratic. Okay, and it just kind of connects with the, the midpoint, in this case would be x equals 1, because that's halfway between, or sorry, x equals 0 0.5, would be halfway between those two values. So kind of the vertex of this graph would happen at 0 0.5. Um, you don't have to find that point right now, but that's kind of where you would draw this so that the rough shape looks correct. Okay, um, we found all of our values. C and D, eventually you will probably memorize and you won't have to do all of this work, but that is how you kind of go through it. If we were to do this last question here, if we were to graph this one, this one's a little bit harder. Um, what we want to look at is first, our, can we make the bottom zero? Okay, do we have a, a vertical asymptote? Well, there's no way to make the bottom of this graph zero. Because any number that we put in for x, we're squaring it and then we're adding another number. Okay, so the, because we're adding a number on, even if you put zero in, zero squared is zero plus four, we can't get any smaller than that. So there's no vertical asymptote. Okay, there's a horizontal asymptote again at zero. So if we were graphing this, there's a vertical asymptote, or sorry, a horizontal asymptote at zero, because we haven't moved the graph up or down and we can't make that one go away. So we're always gonna have like one over some number. So that value is gonna be y equals zero. We're gonna have a y-intercept at a quarter. Um, we have no vertical asymptotes, so we don't have to uh, approach those values at all. All we have to do is have f at negative infinity and f at positive infinity. Okay, now this is going to be 1 over, and remember that squared value is going to trump everything. 
So that's 1 over infinity. So it's essentially getting really close to 0. Same thing's happening here. It's getting really close to 0. So we know we've got this and this. And the graph, actually, I'm going to change that middle part. Just make it a little bit bigger, a little easier to see. Let's call that. And that's a quarter. We've just made this graph bigger. It's just going to come up like that and come down. Okay, it's a unique type of squared graph on the bottom there because it doesn't have any asymptotes, but that's essentially what it's going to look like. Okay, there's a couple questions to go along with this.